All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got a brand new Zanola 290RC. We're going to modify for use in a helicopter. Uh, 28.5 cc's. Uh, a couple things we're going to lose are this can muffler, which isn't really quiet. We're just going to save this guy for the weed whacker where it belongs, I think, and get rid of it. Um, we are going to completely tear down this motor in this video so you guys can see everything that's necessary to tear it down. I like to get these magnetic trays and save all my screws. That way they don't get lost. And some of these screws you'll actually reuse. So the wrench that comes with your motor is actually pretty handy for tearing down a lot of this stuff. So you have to forgive me working on camera here is something new to me. I'm doing my best. So we'll get rid of this guy. No need for that. Might be able to save this gasket. Sometimes they'll come off. Oh, look at that. Got a nice gasket. That's a keeper. A little bit of boogers here, but nice brand new piston in there. So let's go ahead and tear the fan shroud off. Again, we'll use our handy dandy Zanoa wrench here. It has just the right size screwdriver conveniently to take out these screws. So the gist of modifying these motors are that one, we're going to try to make it run smoother and less vibration at the RPMs at which we run them at in helicopters. So that's going to require us to change the balance factor inside the motor. So different manufacturers use different balance factors. The one that I like for this motor requires substantial lightening of the piston. We'll get into that in another video. In this video, we're just going to focus on the tools that you need to tear this little guy down and get it all in pieces so you can start the process. I think in the next video, what we'll do is we'll true the crank up, which is also important in a helicopter. We want the crank to run as straight as possible, and usually out of the box, these things are a thou and a half out or even two thou out sometimes. And So there's our fan shroud and starter. Get that guy off to the side. We're going to keep that for later. Going to need to take this spark plug wire off. Here's our handy dandy Zanoa wrench again. And get our spark plug out. We'll save this guy. That's one we're going to keep. Got one screw here on the plastic shroud to remove. Get that guy out of the way so that we can get the cylinder head and stuff off and get down to the nitty gritty. You can see these things aren't very difficult to work on. There's not a lot of special tooling required. There's our shroud. Get that guy out of the way. Got a coil here and kill switch. And see the way this guy works is all it does is it connects this pin and this pin together on the coil. And that doesn't allow it to saturate anymore and stops making spark and kills the engine. So the bolts on these are a three millimeter. And there's a plastic washer behind this coil on both of these screws. We want to be very careful not to lose those. Those are important to set the spacing on this coil here, see, because it needs to ride in the center of this flywheel right over these magnets. And if we don't put these spacers back in, and well, I don't even know if the coil will fit if we didn't put them back. So let's get these out and carefully get our washers to stay on there so we don't lose those. Uh-oh, just dropped one. See, I told you guys not to lose it and I lost one. There it is. So we'll get the other guy out. We'll set those washers in our handy tray there with our screws. We'll set the coil aside. So now we're down to a cylinder head and a block and a carburetor. So um, we can pull the head off without taking the carburetor off and kind of see what's inside. So you're going to kind of break these loose evenly if you can, you know, because it, you are unloading a cylinder head that's torqued and I don't know if they can actually warp or not. I don't think I've ever warped one, but there's always that chance. So again, we get these bolts out and 
when you guys go to put your motors back together you are going to have to buy some gaskets um, there's several places that sell the head gaskets for these and um, you may need a carburetor gasket you are going to need a new case gasket which is the one that runs right here in between the case halves because we are going to split the case to get this guy apart so now we're getting into the good stuff here so it's, all you got to do is just pull this guy off and slips right off and there's the piston and crankshaft down in there and still got a flywheel on here I'll show you guys how to take the flywheel off in a minute and there's what the inside of a stock Zenoa 290 looks like we're going to do some work to that and reshape some of those ports a little bit and might even do a trick to get rid of this little there's a little edge in there I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not but we'll try to get rid of that guy so um, let's set this aside for now and we'll work on the flywheel so now here's where the special tools come into play that you might want to think about um, you're going to need a puller I, I know there's ways to do this without it some guys will take bolts and they'll screw them in here and they'll line them up and get a longer threaded bolt and they'll push it against the case and pop it off i'm not a real big fan of doing that um, it's probably not the best way to do things so let me grab a socket wrench here i'll be right back give me a second so the hard part here is that i should have done this with the piston stop and loosen this nut first but um, you need to jam the crank somehow so you want to be careful with these crankshafts because you can twist them and make them more uh, out of true than they are to begin with so you want to be careful what you stick in here to, to jam this thing you want to try to jam the side of the crank over here that is on the flywheel so you can't really twist anything and a lot of guys will put pieces of rope in there or something or let me see how this plastic will work that might do it you might be able to break it loose with that nope so probably not the best thing to do but i'm going to stick this guy in there or maybe well let me break this guy loose with something else and we'll come back to it all right we're back here so i got my little quarter inch impact gun out and I'm just going to hold the flywheel with my hand and crack her loose. See, I mean, it's not that bad. Really, what I should have done if I didn't have this gun available to me was put a piston stop in it before I pulled the cylinder head off. And that probably would have been a nicer way to do it. But So Dave sells this nice tool, Dave's Discount Motors. Um, a couple other people resell them. And what I've done is I've got a couple of longer six millimeter screws here that I can screw into the threaded holes in the fan and I just kind of screw them down evenly here I don't know if you guys can see it or not so that it uh, when you go to put this jack screw in here up against the crank to pull the fan off it goes in nice and straight so here's our handy jack screw that comes with this puller all you got to do is run this guy in and the fans come off pretty easily they don't require a whole lot of pressure to pop them off i mean they're they're aluminum so they can't really go on there too hard anyway so there we go so we'll see this is all tightened up here this is kind of i don't know if you can see in there or not it's pushing against the end of the crank and it's centered pretty good so let's grab a wrench here i think this is an eight and they're just going to put it in and we'll turn this guy that's it you heard the crack that was the flywheel coming loose from the crank okay so you want to be careful when you take this off there's a little pin here a little keyway that usually comes out pretty easily sometimes they they fight with you a little bit but you want to get this out and put it in your little bin of parts because you're going to need that later when you go to put this guy back together. 
So this one looks like it's gonna fight with me just a little bit. Yeah, we'll get a screwdriver and pop this guy out in a minute. Sometimes you can walk them out with the pick. They come out pretty easily and sometimes they don't. Yeah, this one's going to fight a little bit. Anyway, so we've got our puller. Take this guy out. Set it aside. And this puller works on the clutches too. You just have to get some different bolts. So when you put that clutch hub on that comes with the motor and you go, uh-oh, I need to service this motor. This puller is a very handy tool to have. One of the things we'll do is check the balance on this flywheel and make sure that it's running balanced you know we'll put it on a high point balancer and we'll check it out so now we're down to this guy let me grab something to pop that out with all right so i got a little screwdriver here and you can see i already started kind of walking it out of the crank and uh we're going to finish that process and try not to lose the there it went. There it go. There it is. We'll throw it in our bowl here. So now we're going to split this crankcase, get this guy apart, get some of these tools picked up. And the way these crankcases come apart is they just have four screws that hold them together, and there's a gasket in there. So again, you want to kind of be easy on it. Well, let's not lose our fan nut here. That's an important one. We got those all cracked loose. We'll get some more of these tools out of the way. We'll pull this guy. Get the rest of these screws out. Okay, so we've got those out. Now, some of these cases, you can just wiggle them around and they'll well, it'll probably help if we took this gasket off that's gluing it together, huh? Get this guy off. You see why we have to replace these is that they um, fall apart and get stuck all over the crankcase. So that guy came apart pretty good. Oh. We won on this one. We got to save this gasket and reuse it. We don't have to buy it. Woo! That's a good one. That's a keeper, boys and girls. All right, so here's what's inside of one of these guys. As you saw in the previous video, there's a nice bearing in here. and These things come stock with a sealed outer bearing. And Actually, I'm a fan of having the double bearing on these things. I know that on the modified motors, they're using the Chin Yang crank and these guys here and, and the difference is is that our Zenoa crank is nice and straight all the way out over here so you can have these double bearings and it seals up pretty good and you don't have a crankcase leak where the Chin Yang actually has a bit of a taper to it you can't really see it I don't think without measuring it but anyway point of it is is if you're going to run the aftermarket crank then you have to go to a front seal and Put it take this bearing out now i'll show you how to do that in another video there's a really easy way to get them out okay so anyway so here's the back side of our crankcase all disassembled and if we're just modifying the stock crank we don't need to fool around with these bearings and seals because i don't i don't do anything to the crankcases i just leave them alone they're, they're pretty good the way they are i mean there's some little little bit of stuff you can do to them but really it, it's it's very minor stuff and doesn't do much for performance it's just a little bit of an edge that the other guy may not have you know so crankshaft nice heavy piston with all that meat in there look at that meaty son of a gun in there and then we got a piston ring here and we have a little circlip in here and the way you take this piston off of this crankshaft at least the way that i do it anyway is i get in here with a pick and you got to kind of 
figure out where the circlip opens up and usually the factory has the opening up here at the top and you got to kind of push this pin down a little bit and give yourself a little room try not to stab yourself with the pick some guys are really good at this taking these out and I've always struggled with it but the idea is you need to bend this clip over enough to free it from the piston and that way you can wow this is really hard to do with a camera here huh it's hard to see it let's try to do this side and see if we can get it out there she goes you see that see how I got it under there so I put my finger over them because they do like to go boing and pop across the room so you kind of just work it out like that get it out of there and she'll come out and they tell you not to reuse these guys and generally I don't they're cheap you can buy them they are a spring and they kind of get deformed once they've been in the piston some guys reuse them but I generally don't so once you have that out, you can get in there and push the piston pin out here. We won't be reusing this one. This one's really heavy. I'll show you guys a trick that a good friend of mine showed me. So be careful. We pull this out, and there's a couple of washers here alongside of the crank. Here's the piston and the ring. We'll set this guy down, and you see these washers here help center the piston on the connecting rod. We'll keep those. There's a nice new bearing in here. We'll keep that guy. So there we are. Down to the crankshaft. So in the next video, I'll show you guys how to check this thing and make sure it's straight. And then uh, I think we'll do some balancing on that flywheel and get our bottom end all buttoned up and we'll start working on the top end. Thanks for watching.